G'day, and this is my van tour. I thought I'd do a little bit of um, talking about uh, band saws, in particular the, the, the 4x6 type, which is in most home workshops. A little bit about uh, how to cut better, a little bit about what features to look for, and a little bit about some of the, the jigs that I've made up to help me cut a, a wider range of, of things. So hopefully there's something for everybody there. First up, a little bit about blades and teeth in the cut. Now, that's a jigsaw blade, but it illustrates very nicely what I, I, uh, I need to, to say about this. Firstly, there's a rule of thumb that says three teeth minimum in a cut. Now, the reason for that is that if you think of this as a thin piece of material, going in there, that can catch. A saw blade works by basically scraping off a thin layer. And so if you haven't got those two and a half, three teeth in a cut, what you can find is the blade will jam, which either means your blade might break, um, it might come off the wheels, it could strip teeth off the blade, depending on what you're doing. So that's, that's the three teeth in the cut rule. Okay, that's the, that's the important one. There is another one, which is about 10 teeth in a cut. This one not so many people know about or pay any attention to, and I must admit to being one of those. And that's basically, if you have more than about 10 teeth in a cut, the gullets, which are those spaces between the teeth, are not going to be able to cope with the material being removed. And what will happen is it will slow your rate of cut. If you're trying to cut something like a stainless steel, um, you could end up just work hardening the, the material, uh, all that sort of stuff. So. The idea is you don't want teeth on a blade that are too small for the job and you don't want teeth on the blade which are too big. So this is my bandsaw. Uh, it's, it's not a typical 4x6 bandsaw. Um, this one has got a swiveling head. Now there are, there are basically two types, one with a swiveling head and one without. Funny about that. When we talk about a swiveling head what we mean is that there's a bolt here, and if I loosen that bolt up, I can swivel the head round. The vice stays in the spot, same spot, the head swivels. Okay. The alternative type, the vice swivels, the head stays as it is. And if you can think about that, if you're cutting straight cuts all the time, it probably doesn't matter. However, if you're cutting angled cuts, and they vary, you probably want the swiveling head type. They're a little bit more expensive. They don't often come in, in small saw, size saws like this, but it's worth thinking about. Uh, some people with the swiveling vise type have some blocks they slip into the vise to, to get the angles, but if you imagine setting this up on your in your shop, you've got to have a long length of, if you're cutting a long length of material, you have to have that sticking out somewhere. So with a swiveling head type, you could have this against a wall with some feed in racks, feed out racks, and you're okay. With the swiveling vice type, you're going to have stuff going across the, the saw. Minor point, most people doesn't worry them, um, but it's, it's something to bear in mind. Two accessories come with this style of saw, and uh, they're worth mentioning. When the saw is up like this, it can actually be used as a vertical band saw. You have a, uh, a table arrangement like that, you take off those two screws, and put that in there like so, clamp this in the vise, and you've got a, a very basic vertical saw. I've used it for some things, it's not all that um, great, you certainly wouldn't do it for production type things, but it will get you out of a squeeze worth thinking about. I have also occasionally removed this handle uh, so that I can get slightly bigger things through because as it is you've got a, a very limited throat. The other thing which comes with this sort of saw and uh, is worth fitting onto other saws is a, is a, uh, a length stop uh, and that'll screw in down here and you adjust this stop up just so that when you're repetitively cutting pieces of material, 
you don't have to measure it all the time and usually I measure the first one and then before cutting I'll, I'll put this on, wind up the stop, cut away and I know that all the pieces are going to be around about the same size. Another accessory worth making up is something like this. Uh, I found an old roller sitting around the place so that's what I've used but you could do it with even with just with some blocks of wood. Um, when you're feeding material into the vise it's nice to have something to support the material so that it doesn't tend to pull the, the saw off to one side. Similarly if you're cutting long pieces of material it's nice to have a support there so that they cut rather than get to a certain spot and then just fall off. So these saws can cut a variety of materials. Uh, on this one I've got aluminium, cast iron, alloy steel, mild steel, but the only thing I haven't cut is stainless steel and that's simply because stainless steel can be very problematic if the, if the blade warms up the teeth go blunt um, you end up rubbing your way through the steel very inefficiently so I, I, I don't cut stainless with this, I use a, an angle grinder or something like that. Uh, cutting steel is no problem, cutting cast iron is no problem. The only material which is a little bit problematic with this sort of saw is cutting aluminium. So to, to, to cut aluminium there are, there are two ways you can make it a little bit easier for yourself. Firstly, when you're cutting like that, so when cutting aluminium there are two ways you can make it easier for, for yourself. One is when the blade is down, cutting, 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 you can use the stub of a candle to rub on the blade a little bit. That provides a little bit of lubrication and in aluminium that's important because it means the aluminium doesn't then stick to the teeth. Okay, you have to be careful because you've got a saw running at the time you're, you're doing this. Um, and you, you can't run the saw unattended, but it's, it's a possibility. The other one that I do occasionally is I get a, a, a piece of mild steel. Just it could be some scrap, it could be some something that I'm, I'm just have sitting there that I can get rid of. I put that behind the aluminium because what will happen, even, you're only taking a small cut off the steel, but what will happen is that the, the steel will tend to clear the blade of the aluminium chips so it'll help it cut. So that's another option you've got if, you, if you're trying to cut aluminium with one of these saws. Okay, so some cutting tricks. Most people will use a saw like this for cutting things to length. And that's fine, that's what they're designed to do. You will get to a stage though where it gets too short. You might have something like this that you want to cut off. Why you would, I don't know, but stranger things have happened. Now, some people's saws are flat across here, so you could just clamp that to the outside and cut away. This one isn't, and so the way I've worked out how to do this is to basically put a, a piece of, of bar stock in there. I need a spacer on the other end to make sure my vise doesn't uh, jam, and clamp it like that. So you can cut really short bits that, that wouldn't necessarily fit in your, do, uh, in your jaw. It's a good idea whenever cutting anything which is going to be you know, a little bit away from the center line of your vise, the, the screw line of your vise, to have something on the other side anyway. Uh, and I have a scrap box full of bits and pieces which I can use for just that. Another thing that you might want to cut is you might have something like that and you need a, a half round or uh, occasionally you get you need a, a square piece of material and you can only get round so you want to take the sides off and so you know there's a, there's a side that's been taken off a bit of round to get a square piece out of it. They're worth retaining because there's a, there's a good bit of material in there. The alternative is of course to mill that down but you're wasting a lot of material uh, for something that could come in handy. So the way I do that is like this. I have a V-block and I clamp that in there and then I'll put that round in there so that it just misses the V-block but it will cut the round. You may need to adjust your blade guide back but that's the way to do it. Okay. And the way you, you, you do this is he thumping and banging. You 
by putting something like a G clamp across the work. Like so, and that'll hold it. The only other thing to bear in mind is that once you get down into the cut, you may need to reposition your G-clamp, but what you'll also want to do is get a thin piece of material that you can then jam in the cut so that when it gets down to the bottom, it's not going to pinch the blade and, and jam everything up. Right. So that's cutting rounds along their axis. The other one that you might want to do is cut thin flats. So this is another device that I've made up. Similar thing, you use a G-clamp to clamp it on and you have to put that spacer in there to hold the, the cut open. But basically, once again, you're putting that there and you're, you're, you're cutting like so, G-clamp over the top. Okay. So with this, you can cut thin pieces off, off short bar stock, because obviously it's, if it was longer, you could just hold it normally in the vise, which is really handy if you're like me, you got gifted a, a bunch of offcuts. So there are just a few tips that you can use for uh, getting more out of your bandsaw. Uh, hopefully that's of, of use to uh, people, help them extend what they do with their bandsaw. I'd like to thank those who've inspired me and encouraged me and uh, hopefully this has done the same for you.